Hey everybody, welcome back. We are today going to talk about one of my favorite little speakers here, the little LGKs. They're called LGKs because the original the little three-inch driver that, uh, that I had done was quite the giant killer. So we called it the little giant killers and the little giant killer name stuck. We still call them the LGKs. This is the LGK 2.0 and it's a new version that we've had done. And it was kind of based off of the original um, LGK model, but we wanted to try and take it another level as far as quality and the performance of it. And we did some really special things with this thing. I mean, the sound quality of these things are just phenomenal. I mean, they are beautiful sounding speakers. And especially the vocals. Oh, they're so beautiful. And the imaging is unbelievable. When you've got this minimal surface area here you got very little surface reflection at all the speaker becomes more transparent and more three-dimensional because we've minimized that reflection the bigger that baffle gets the more it draws attention to itself and says here i am you know here's the speaker this thing is tiny so wow it becomes transparent so um but it has a specific application and it's great in that application. I mean, these were designed to be desktop speakers. And they're perfect in that role. And for an application where you're you're sitting in front of them, you're a small, uh, small room, even a little small theater systems. But when doing a small theater system, you have to set your settings to small. You can't overdrive them. They are very much power limited. And that's the that's the drawback to using the little three-inch, four-inch driver. Uh, the original LG case had two and a half millimeters of X max. That was kind of the target for these, but they wound up being only one millimeter of X max. And that's the way the voice coil wound up getting in order to produce the frequency response that we were targeting. That's the one that sounded the best, but it is limited. And some people have noticed if you throw a bunch of bass boost at these things, because you think they need more bass and you start cranking them up full range here, you're gonna run out of X Max immediately. They're gonna they're gonna basically just bottom out. Um, they don't hit the back plate, so you don't hear a bottoming out. But they're completely out of control. Your distortion levels are gonna shoot way up. It's just gonna sound horrible. Um, it's not designed to do that. If you're going to run these things at any kind of power levels, you have to put something in line with your amplifier or set your settings in some way to roll the bottom end off. If you roll the bass off you know, the more power you, that they can handle. It's just like a tweeter. If you take a tweeter and you try to play at full range, it's it's going to reach its excursion limits immediately, and you can't run a tweeter full range. It'll, it'll self-destruct. These are kind of the same way. The voice coil on these is about the same diameter as you'd get in a lot of tweeters, and um, so it's not going to handle a whole lot of power. But if you limit the low frequency range, just like a tweeter, if you let it play within the range that it's designed to play in, then it'll be very comfortable in that range. And we've we set these up the other day in here, put a little inline filter in line with our amplifier, which is a little 60 watt amps. Um, and we used the big triple servo subs, which we're still sitting here. We turned those on and I balanced the levels and balanced the crossover point so that it was a smooth transition between these things. These were about seven feet away on stands in a big room. And we're playing them to good levels, you know, no issues at all. Beautiful sounding. And I had Ron Brene come over and we set up his head, which he affectionately calls Randy, and does the uh, bioral recordings where, you know, the, the mics are in the ears of the head. And we made some recordings. We did three songs. And those tracks that we recorded are going to be thrown up on our server. So you can just click on the, hopefully on the links below and you can listen to those audio tracks of these things playing at you know probably 85 db levels almost and they're comfortable in that range so long as you're rolling the bottom end off i noticed some of the guys online have talked about how um they're trying to play these things at 90 db full range and stuff that's that's crazy they're not going to do that i mean it's a small three inch driver you're going to run out of X-Max immediately trying to play it to 90 dB levels. That's, I mean, who listens 
at, for extended periods of times at 90 dB levels. That's actually pretty loud. So you have to use these within the intended application that they were designed for, and they excel at that really well, and they're very low cost. There's probably nothing else out there even close to these in sound quality that's this small that you can use in those applications. But it's, it's still bugging us a little bit that you can't really throw some juice to them or can't play them wide open without getting them out of shape. So we've been working on a new version, and this, this just came in. Same woofer, but with a much longer X-Max. We're going to try to see if we can get this to work in the same application. If the frequency response is still smooth, we'll, we'll use some of these drivers for the applications where we've got a single unit, and that will help some. That will um, let you increase the power on it, maybe almost double. But still, it's a small driver. You're going to run out of X-Max if you start beating on it, so keep that in mind. Now, the thought, though, of, of making a little bigger monitor out of it, something to drive it, you know, something that will allow you to drive it harder. Before, on the old LGKs, we did one LGK at the top of a skinny box, and we did four more below it just doing the low frequency, and we called it the skinny six. It had six drivers. It had one on the rear that was like an ambience driver that was just playing high frequency and it imaged like crazy and it sounded really good but that starts getting pretty pricey you start adding up these full range drivers a whole bunch of them pretty soon you've exceeded the price of a lot of our X series kits so it doesn't make any sense this is supposed to be a lower cost alternative that sounds really good so um, we came up with this idea we've got a lot of these little woofers that I got as a buyout and we did a little speaker with these we called the desktop mini where we had a bunch of um, or what we did was we used one of these and a little tweeter and it was also a little metal white dome metal tweeter and we got all of them at a, a an auction basically buyout um, and I didn't have a lot of money in them so we priced these things stupid cheap and just used them as a lost leader and we sold all of them till we ran out of tweeters and I still have a bunch of these woofers so we got to thinking about it and thought you know this this is a great application for keeping the box skinny and with the truncated sides we can keep the box pretty skinny and mount the little LGK driver right over it and cross it at a low frequency range and allow this thing to be just a woofer and this thing works really well just as a woofer the vocals in it were fair the vocals in this are phenomenal so we want to hand off to this as soon as we can but let this take the load and play the low frequency. We've had it on the drawing board for a while. We just haven't had time to get some of the uh, cabinets knocked out. This is a little drawing there of the cabinets. We're going to throw it up as a little uh, file for you to see online um, so you can get a little better pick, better, uh, better view of it. And it puts this in a little sealed box in its own airspace up top. We've got a little diagonal brace separating the uh, it from the woofer. The woofer needs a little more airspace, but we're going to do it in a sealed box too. We're going to try to keep this as small as possible and keep the cost as low as possible. We also came up with the idea of, hey, if we can do um, we can do one like that, let's let's put a woofer on each side of this thing and make a low cost center channel. And these things work great as a center channel, and it works great in a theater system uh, for one reason: the it has a controlled dispersion. I say controlled; it may be. Limited may be a better term to use. As you know, um, any diaphragm, no matter how big it is, as soon as it's playing a wavelength where that wavelength is shorter than the width of the diaphragm, then it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to beam. That's what we, we call beaming. In other words, it's just going to play it straight on. And if you go left or right, you're outside of that range, and the high frequencies will just start to drop off. And it's the same, like I said, with anything. It can be a three-quarter inch dome tweeter, or half inch dome tweeter, which is really small compared to a inch and a half dome tweeter, and that smaller tweeter is going to have a broader uh, off-axis response than the bigger tweeter. The bigger the diaphragm, the more it starts to narrow down. And to me, a three-inch driver tends to be kind of the sweet spot. With a three-inch full-range driver, you still got pretty good off-axis response, but you have a limited off-axis response. It's not as broad as a tweeter would be, so. When you're in an application where you have untreated walls, untreated room, a lot of reflective surfaces, you may not want a dispersion that's that wide because it will start to sound bright. 
um, and it'll start to sound a little overbearing and harsh. Whereas this is not going to have as wide a dispersion. It's a little more controlled and it might work out a lot better. If you start getting bigger than a three inch, you start going into four and five inch wideband drivers. And even there's a lot of companies out there making eight inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, even 15 inch drivers that are considered wideband drivers and play full range. And as soon as you move left or right, just a little, the whole top end is gone. So you have to keep those things aimed right at your head in order for them to work. So you wind up getting into a situation where the room response is really uneven and it's kind of a hot spot like aimed right at your head where you can hear the whole frequency range. So the overall in room response becomes very imbalanced when you do that. And the three inch driver seems to be kind of a, a sweet spot. You start getting any bigger and it, it starts to go south, but something within this range has its advantages. So it's, it's not going to be bad to use it in those applications. And we've got a floor standing version that we're going to do as well. It is going to have one of those little drivers up top, one of the little GK drivers, and four of these in a line down below. And what we're going to do is as the sensitivity is going to be a lot higher on the, the four of these little five inch drivers that are going to be down below the four of those. So I'll use a larger and larger coil to start the roll off back where these are already rolling off. And I'll fold that down over and match the sensitivity of these. So even though these are in a sealed box and we're keeping it in a really small box for you guys, and these don't need much airspace, uh, the overall extension is going to be pretty good as it's brought down to the sensitivity level of the little LGK driver. So it'll make for a really interesting little floor standing speaker that will have a good bass and good control and still have the beautiful vocals and the detail that these little drivers have. So um, I hope all of you guys will click on the links and give these a little listen. It'll give you an idea. Again, you're not going to get that sense of imaging and layering and soundstage and things that these things are doing, but it should give you a great idea on the tonality and just how these things sound and why we're so excited about them. And this is going to be a nice little product line in the LGK series of low cost DIY designs that are big time overachievers, big, big time overachievers. So looking forward to getting that stuff out. We're just waiting on these cabinets to be made some prototypes. We're going to do some testing. We got a lot ahead of us. It takes time to develop these products. They don't just, we don't just whip them out in a few days or something. It takes a long time to get this development done but this is what's in the works and if this is something you guys are interested in <clears throat> hang on because it's coming and uh, i look forward to some of the feedback on the little lgks as there there's we've shipped a lot of them now so a lot of you guys should be getting these together and can be posting your feedback on just how great these things sound and of course this one here is sitting on the little stand that we offer for this this is a little desktop stand that killing came up with and it's tilted a little bit and tilts this thing up and it gets it up to ear level and it's perfect, perfect for a desktop. And you guys can paint these things or slap a little veneer on the sides or whatever you want. It's an easy DIY stand that works great. So if you guys are interested in that, they're available there on our website. That's it for this video. Um, click the subscribe button if you haven't. I do appreciate the increase in the subscriptions and we'll see you guys in the next video.